What's up, Warrior Rising family? It is Alyssa here, and we are back with Lorena Black. She is an incredible veteran with an awesome business, and she just came back a few weeks ago from Detroit, where she competed in a pitch competition. So we're going to hear about her experience and a lot of other things in between, but it is great to follow back up with you, Lorena. It's good to be back. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So tell us first, how was Detroit and what, what was your biggest or if there's many big key takeaways, like let us know what that was. It was a great experience just to be welcomed into the Warrior Rising family and community. Everything leading up to it was was awesome. But to get there, to connect with the fellow finalists, yeah. I think that that was huge for me. Just the friendships that I feel that I made while we yeah. were there that will be lifetime friendships. And then the opportunities to meet meeting James Dix James was yeah. huge for me personally because yeah. he does exactly, you know, that thing. And just the overall, just the, the time and the support and everything poured into all of us was was really awesome. Yeah, James was awesome. And he just had a podcast come out, but he was it's such an incredible keynote speaker and such a good friend caring for it. I mean, he said, if you've like shaken his hand, talk to him in that room, he's like, here's my personal number. Yeah, no, he's, he's been amazing. And I was listening to his podcast yesterday, checking it out just because it is great. And he's one of those people that, that you can tell means it when he says it. Cause you'll, you'll yeah. meet people that'll say, take my number, but they don't mean it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's plenty of those. Yeah. Having people in this Warrior Rising community, I mean, the culture speaks for itself. If you want to speak on some of it, too, just what you yeah. experienced firsthand. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll even share that. So after having gone through it, just everyone, again, that I met there, how they poured into us, the community, past winners that are alumni that are part of it, that were there, that took time to you know, offer that advice, offer that support. It's been great. Even I went up to Grand Rapids the following Monday after the weekend and I met with Michael Hyacinth. Yeah. And he sat, spent time talking to me too. So it's just, it doesn't end. Like yeah. You went to the pitch competition and just knowing it doesn't end is really an amazing feeling. And so I've been telling yeah. anybody, any vet, I actually had a veteran that I served with recently reach out. We're supposed to talk today about he's curious about the program and experience yeah. and everything. So I'm, I'm excited to get to share that with, with other people. Absolutely. And just growing it. Cause I mean, the community, the more veterans you have and the alumni, the more help that we get for the incoming veterans. So it's like the community just keeps growing. You yeah. Know? It's just really awesome. Yeah, but from is. your from your experience, what do you think are some of the unique qualities that female entrepreneurs bring to the table? Well, like with anything, with any just the workforce in general in any environment, yeah. we bring a lot. We yeah. bring ourselves, we bring our lived experiences, we bring our empathy and our caring yeah. and our hearts to things. Not saying that men don't bring all that, but there's also something there I think showing other women that may feel limited, that may feel like I can't do this. Or I gave a talk over the weekend on imposter syndrome and yeah. shutting down that, that liar. <laughs> that is that thing telling you that you can't do it. So I think seeing more women entrepreneurs out there doing it, it just shows other people that, wow, like I can step out and I can do that. And I think there's a passion that we bring to just, yeah, passion that we bring to everything that we do. <laughs> Yeah, from like a, a nurturing side too, as like, you know, moms bring a different thing to the table than dads, you know, and yeah. things like that. So it's kind of cool. I remember being an ROTC and I had, I had some of the younger, cause I went, oh, I was older when I went and said, yeah, they're like, she's great, but she acts too much like a mom sometimes. <laughs> and I was like, well, at that point I'd only been a mom for like two years. So I think it's just a personality thing, but it is funny. Like I definitely do. I, I feel that I think about even the warrior rising yeah. thing, like when I met certain people like I felt this like I wanted them to win like I yeah. wanted their success as much as I wanted my own and I think that that is something that's special about us as women sometimes yeah no absolutely so if there's let's say a female vet who's considering entrepreneurship but they're really hesitant maybe it's imposter syndrome maybe it's mm -hmm. something else what's the advice that you would give to her yeah well I'd I'd, I'd tell her to start with you know, thinking about her why, because throughout yeah. this process that I got really clear on my, my own why I start there and then think about the things that that imposter might be saying to you and ask yourself, what's real, 
what's actually true about what this voice in my head is telling me? Will I fail if I do this? Will I not be successful? Am I just this? Am I only that? Like really sit with that. And if, and if when you're doing that and you realize that it is all lies, you say, take a bet on, bet on yourself. Like yeah. take a chance and, and just, and do it. And I don't know, I feel like we can't go wrong when we, when we bet on ourselves and take a chance. I might be stealing that from somebody else. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think that there's truth in it. No, definitely. We all just recycle certain things that we've heard, but it's, yeah. um, but it's like, you know, uh, I, I love saying that like better in yourself, self-belief. Cause that was something for me that I struggled with. Uh, just because a lot of how you grow up or your environment limits you. And sometimes you be, that's all you know, right? And maybe that's all yeah. your parents or guardians knew as well. So they can only teach you what they know. Um, so I think military has really opened my eyes, like that foundation, um, just because you meet people from all walks of life. So yeah. you see different perspective. So I think that's a really, really cool thing. Like sometimes you just have to step into what is uncomfortable. If it's safe, you know, not like crazy risky, but, you know, step step into that unknown, you'll be pleasantly surprised what happens when you face your fears a little bit so yeah and there's something really cool about challenging yourself in that way yeah. because i was listening to something on calm today and it was, was yeah. talking about that like if you do if you do what's easy there isn't always that feeling you get of like wow you know like i did yeah. a half marathon once and i did walk a little bit through it but when i got done yeah. i was like I, could, I felt like i could do anything yeah. You know, there's just something about pushing yourself out of comfort and, and, and accomplishing that shows you, man, like I did that and I can do more things. Yeah. It's like every little risk you take, you're like, okay, I didn't, you know, I survived it and yes. I came out. Okay. So it's like, you kind of want to keep tasting that again. You're like, okay, let's, let's try something else now. So, I mean, I think it opens the doors to, you know, a ton of things. Yeah. But specific to veterans, since our community is like veteran, military spouse, things like that, do you think there's any unique challenges that this community faces, maybe opposed to just uh, civilian entrepreneurs? I do. I think that as we're, as we're, we're we, we need to take, I think there's challenges, but they're also like really great things that it gives us. I think it's taking, depending on what your service experience was like, I think that that could affect you. So if you had a negative experience, in your in the military that you might carry that with you as you're you're trying to do you know your next thing so i th i think that if you had a positive experience it's it's different because you're able to you know take those things so i i do i do think that those things come into play but i also think that we have we are lucky that we have all the skills yeah. and things that we learned during our whether your experience was positive or negative you learned and you grew and it and yeah. it's you're able to take that and then you also have there are so many resources out there for, for veterans that, that want to do this, that, you know, support systems like Warrior Rising, like other organizations. Now, there, aren't, there aren't as many as I'd like to see when it yeah. comes to career growth and development and those types of things. But there are things out there. And there is, you see that people want to rally around veterans, you know, to, yeah. help, to help us be successful. So I'm not sure if I answered the question there. Yeah, but I, I no, think, you did. yes, there are unique challenges we face. And it's just learning how to take those things and turn them into positives. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I like that piece of advice. Um, now with She Served, what was there a specific piece of advice you were given that really sticks with you from the event or like either advice or just something you learned about yourself? Yeah, I think one of the things, one of the, the, the pieces of feedback, you know, just honestly around just my company being called She Served and how it it. It instantly, it automatically, it automatically makes you think that that I am targeting just women veterans, and really I want to serve all veterans. And the she part of it, it represents me as as I as I am she. But one of the things, advice wise, that I got is that yeah, that is going to take a lot of of effort, I guess, in telling that story and getting people to realize that I am looking to serve all veterans. And so it might be something that I that I want to think about, like maybe I do you know, niche down. And I, and I do focus on women veterans because that's the community that I am most involved in. Yeah. And, and I have those shared lived experiences. So that's, that was something, you know, that I've really been thinking about a lot. Also thinking about, you know, I want to, I want to have so many ways. So I want to coach and I want to do leadership development yeah. training and I, and I do speaking and it's, it's really thinking about of those things, where can I make the greatest impact and, and focusing on that because at the end of the day, that is what I want to do. Like, I want to serve other people. I want to make an impact. I want to inspire others. 
And so focusing yeah. on, on being able to do that. Yeah. I mean, you listed a lot of different things. So what is a typical day, not an atypical, but what's a typical day look like for you? Well, right now, because I am in the, still in the growing stages, it's doing, you know, maybe it's doing, you're actually my, my second podcast of awesome. It's doing, it's doing that. Yeah. It's like, how do I put myself out there? A great day is one where I do get to go and do a talk or I do get to go and I get to do a leadership development training. Yeah. That is what fills me up. Last Friday, the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency, we had our third annual, I say yeah. we as if I'm a part of the organization, but I'm on their coalition. So I get to say, we. yeah, but it was the third annual Women's Veterans Conference. And we awesome. had 168 people registered and 108 of those were first time attendees. Cool. And I got to talk to that room of women veterans about imposter syndrome. And that was that that filled me, my my cup so full <laughs> because the, yeah. the reaction that that I received and the way I was able to, like, connect with so many people on different levels in that room was just amazing. No, absolutely. I love talking. I mean, as you know, we've had conversations during the mm -hmm. warrior university it's like talking about that is so important it yeah. spoiler everyone like we all die at the end so <laughs> if we're gonna spend a lot of it comparing ourselves or wondering if people are are they thinking about us they're probably not they're probably yeah. thinking about some other things you know so <laughs> but yeah it's a hard thing and it's a real it's a real problem <laughs> Well, it is. And it's, yeah. it's not a problem that just veterans face. It's not a problem that just women yeah. face. It's something that 70% of people face. And it's just, it's so interesting. And you said something there about like the comparing piece. Like what yeah. I realized here recently for me, I'm spending less time comparing myself to other people and more time comparing myself to old Lorena. Yeah. And I am like, okay, I'm ready to be done with that because all that does, no, I can't run the way I used to run. I'm not as fit as I used to be. I'm not in the yeah. same body I was, but that doesn't make me less than. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's just reminding myself. Yeah, no. And that's a great perspective to have too. I mean, you should only be like looking in the mirror to be like, how can I be better than I was yesterday in whatever capacity that is, you know? Yeah. So I think that's awesome. But um, as that is a challenge, there's a lot of other challenges that come around. I mean, running a business, it, or starting one, whatever phase you're in is not easy, right? It's almost right. harder because you give up a nine to five or whatever for a 24 seven job. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you navigate the ups and downs, the times where you're like, is this really worth it? Should I quit? Because everyone's at least thought about that once. Like, eh, what if I just stopped? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I was very intentional about starting out is blocking my calendar for, for me time. And so I do that. Like, so every day I have time blocked in the morning to make sure that I am getting myself back into the gym or I am meditating or journaling, whatever that, that self-care piece of it looks like for me, I'm being very intentional about that. And that I think is helps with it getting out of, out of control. Yeah. I also am tethered to my why you have to be tethered to your why, because if you're not, it will be easy to walk away, to quit. That why is what's going to keep you like, okay, no, I'm here. And, and then just trusting the process, trusting that I'm also you know, a believer in God. So I, I rely heavily on that too, like keeping my eyes fixed there, whatever your, your higher power may be. It's, it's staying focused on that as well, but it's just, it's, it, I could come back to the, to the why, like what's your why and, and it'll get you through, it'll get you through the hard days. And also that's where I was going to go is remembering yeah. not every day is going to be roses and butterflies and sunshine. <laughs> there yeah. are going to be hard days, but what we were talking about earlier, anything that's worth having, there's going to be some challenges in it and yeah. you just got to stay the course. Yeah. I mean, if it's worth having, it's probably going to take a little bit or a lot of effort, <laughs> a lot of bit. Yeah. 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 And one thing else I want to add is celebrate yeah. the little wins. Sometimes we can be so focused on the big, celebrate the little things, like find as my, my coach would say, the magic moments in every day. And maybe that magic moment for that, that day is you didn't spill coffee on your shirt when you first woke up. Yeah. Or, you know, or maybe you, you know, that call you've been waiting on didn't happen, but maybe a different call happened or just find the, the little things and, and celebrate those. Yeah. Waking up. That's the first one for everybody, right? Yeah. Even if you make your bed, I heard like there's so many different like little things that people do, even like making sure your kitchen is clean the night so that when you wake up, 
you got like a clean space to operate mm. in and like live in. So, I mean, there's so much when it comes to just organization in your own life too. And I'm yeah. reading a lot. Like if you ever read like Atomic Habits or mm -hmm. any kind of, oh, I love reading books like that because it just helps you live more intentionally. Like you said, everything has, we only have so many hours in a day and so many years in our life mm -hmm. to be very intentional with every, every little step. Yeah. So yeah. Are there any uh, people, podcasts, books, things that you recommend that have really helped you step out and be who you are or help you in your business, whatever it is, like, what do you use? So I, I have a confession. So I love to buy books. I love to read. Yeah. So I go down rabbit holes with more fiction type stuff. So I have a ton of books yeah. that I'll either listen to or read, but mostly I learn from people. Yeah. So it's like I individuals that I meet. But if I think about a book, one, Brene Brown's uh, Gifts of Imperfection, that has a lot of really good stuff in it. There's another book called Taming Your Inner Gremlin, and I cannot remember the author's name, but that actually is a really good book too about imposter syndrome and inner yeah. critic and it's recognizing when that starts happening like what's going on okay. i love dan goldman stuff on emotional intelligence yes so so a lot of those things i have a atomic, atomic habit sitting on my desk waiting to be read it's <laughs> so, good bringing it back center because you're it keeps coming up and so that's telling me it's time to read the darn book. See things. So, is, so yeah, the wavelengths are real. Like I really feel like when you put certain energy out there, it's like it. There's we're connected in some kind of way. Like people. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. But no, it's it's definitely a good read, and I think every entrepreneur should read it. It just helps you establish like you know different kinds of habits, but also what a habit even is. You know, bad habits mm -hmm. versus this. But anyways, you'll you'll get to get into all the good details of that. But yeah, so kind of closing out a little bit, what other experiences did you have in Detroit that really stick out? Or what do you want to share with everyone about who's on the fence about joining Warrior Rising or any other organization? Yeah, I, I'd say leading into it, I was given advice that said, you are already, you've already won by, by getting, just being, getting to be a part, getting, getting to be a part of, I love it. of this community. And that was actually so true. Like just getting to go there, getting the experience, getting the training, building the network. So I would say if you are thinking about it, do it. You've got nothing to lose and only things to gain. And again, and it doesn't end after the weekend. Like I'm hoping, you know, to get to go to the next yeah. one and to, can stay in the community. And, and it's huge. And I really do believe that getting to be a part of this, this the cohort and this experience is going to change further propel my business 100 percent. absolutely you're you get a community once you're in the tribe like once you've shown up like you are a part of the tribe but mm -hmm. another big thing too is um to recognize that every veteran on these stages like they earned their spot you earned your spot there you know it didn't come free without effort uh, or training or coaching or whatever it was you had to have something and be willing to show up sometimes that's like what we have to do to show up for ourselves so yeah yeah which is absolutely awesome but it's been great to to talk to you again i see everything that you're doing and speaking and going out there and being the face of it i mean social media is so big now too you know and that's probably yeah. where the imposter syndrome is 70 percent because there's more ways for our, for us to compare ourselves to other people's success yeah this is true yeah. So I just love seeing you going out there doing your thing and inspiring other other women, but other people in general, just to do to do just that, you know, to show up. So if there's any uh, is there any mantras or mottos you live right now that you want to live by right now that you want to share with anyone? So my husband had said this to me a couple of years ago, and I always like to share. It. <laughs> and it's like, um, it, what is it? It's like, go, go and be awesome today because you are. So it's just that reminder, yeah. like, be awesome because you are awesome. Yeah. So oh, I like that. So I always like to share that one. Yeah, that's an awesome one. Cool. I, I'm going to have to <laughs> use that one. I, I like the people who are like, oh, fake it till you make it. I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to fake anything. And I am awesome. You are awesome. And another thing I, I stole from another woman I did a podcast with recently is just, just do the thing. Whatever like that, that is for you, just do the thing. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool, too. So I was like, oh, I'm stealing that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. But I really do appreciate you. Congratulations as well. You are forever in the community. I can't wait to see you again, helping to inspire and coach other veteran entrepreneurs and, you know, whatever else comes from that. There's always some interesting stuff that happens in our community where you, people just resurface and they're <laughs> usually so happy to help others. I love that. Yeah.
Yeah, which is awesome. And I felt that too, like the yeah. amount of people that reached out to me throughout the process that were, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. It was. Well, we appreciate you and I appreciate you coming here and talking to me again. And um, I know it's not going to be the last time, so. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Absolutely. And if you want to share where everyone can find you that's listening right now. Yes, I am all over LinkedIn these yeah. days. I am on Instagram. My website is sheserved.co. So please come and check me out there. And you can also, I'm always willing to connect with people to virtual coffee chats. However, I can support or help. I am here. That is awesome. I love virtual. Co I love coffee, period. So yeah, yeah <laughs> some people like maybe it's a virtual smoothie or if it's after whatever, whatever it is. time it is for you, maybe that's, you know, a cocktail. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> whatever it is. But we appreciate you and everyone listening. Incredible veterans are here. These are this brings voice to what Warrior Rising is all about. If you want to see how you can support, whether it's your time, treasure or your talent or to be a veteran entrepreneur at a pitch competition, please visit WarriorRising.org. And we hope to see you soon at one of our events. See you next time.